Hi and welcome to the channel. I'm Sam and this is a Crafty Blinder van build. Let's be honest with each other. How many vehicles are out there at the minute that have been self-converted and aren't legal? They're overweight. Now this is a big issue and I've seen it on a number of occasions and I've spoken to a number of people with the same problem. Being overweight in your van carries serious consequences. You can be liable for prosecution and fine, your insurance is void, and you run the risk of having your vehicle seized. That might be the end of your holiday, and it might also be the end of your home. Until you can rectify that problem, that vehicle must be taken away and dealt with. The issue dealt with, the weight reduced, so your vehicle can operate legally. Now that might be something you can do quickly, but it might be something that will take you a few days to sort out. In the meantime, you're homeless. Over the last eight months, I've been dealing with a, a vehicle engineer called Dee Thorne. Now Dee owns a company called Vanway Engineering, and they specialise in upplating vehicles, especially self-built camper vans. Dee had this problem himself. He's a van lifer. He has a vehicle that he couldn't get plated to the to what he wanted it to be plated at and because of his knowledge in the, of the industry and his training he set about uplating his own vehicle and he's now turned that into a business this is not a paid promotion I'm doing this video with Dee's consent I asked Dee if he could if he'd like to do something to camera and he didn't he um, <laughs> I asked him if he had any statement he would like to make and he sent me some words so I'm going to interpret them words as best I can, but this is all done with D's permission. I'm going to break down this topic into three smaller parts, and we'll deal with them as we go along. First of all, though, we need to discuss um, how to understand the weight of your vehicle. Now, on your vehicle, this is my new plate, you will have a plate fitted, and it will give you all the information you need to know about your van so it should look something like this as you can see that it will have your make and model of your vehicle it'll have your VIN number on there year of manufacture and it'll have your MAM and your GTW so your MAM is basically maximum allowable mass so that's the total weight you can put in your vehicle including your vehicle your GTW is your gross train weight, that's if you decide to pull a trailer, that's the maximum permitted weight of all that outfit, that's your van, your trailer and whatever you're carrying. Then you'll have your axle weight, the maximum permitted weight you can have over each axle. So axle 1 for mine is 18 kgs, 1800 kgs sorry, axle 2 is 2430. That plate is not going to give you all the information you need. So you know your maximum allowable mass, but you don't know what your vehicle actually weighs. And the only way to get that information is to go to Weybridge. Now if it's a public Weybridge, it might cost you money. If it's a private Weybridge, you're probably as well going along, having a chat with them and doing a deal. Tell them you want to come back a couple of times and they'll probably let you go and, and do it for one price. I know a local haulage firm and they've let me use their bridge a few times now for free. But nothing in this world's for free. Always give them a little treat at the end. Just to say thank you, it's polite, isn't it? That way you'll know exactly what your vehicle weighs. Now the other weight that people talk about is curbside weight. Now that is the weight of your vehicle as it leaves the production line with some fluids in it. So some fuel, some water, nothing else. That isn't accurate either, because if you buy your vehicle new and you decide to put roof bar on it, or a tow bar, or spotlights on the front, it all adds up and them weights are captured. So the only true way to find out what your vehicle weighs is to go and get it weighed yourself. It is what it is. That way, you'll know your actual weight of your vehicle, you'll know exactly what you're allowed to go to, which is three and a half tonnes on the standard setup. And that will then give you your payload and that is the weight that you're going to have to use for your budget you're going to have to watch that weight carefully
just be honest with yourself. What are you going to use this vehicle for? What are your needs? Do you need a medium sized vehicle? Do you need a long wheelbase? Do you need an extra long wheelbase? All these will have a bearing on how much you can add to the vehicle. Be honest with yourself, you know, because for every metre of space you need, that's going to cost you in weight <laughs> for the metal of the vehicle. When you start converting it, you're going to have to add your insulation. You're then going to have to add internal cladding, vapour barriers, and then you're going to start adding your fixtures and fittings. Now, uh, if you've got a big van, you're going to put big weight in. It's just how it works. If you've got a small van, you can't put as much stuff in. So just weigh up how you want to do this, how you want to build your van. Do you want a big van? If you do want a big van, you might have to look at how what van you purchase and we'll cover that in a little while. The next thing to consider is the weight of everything. Try and forecast what things are going to weigh. So the simple thing is get a set of scales, put it on one side, step on them yourself, write down your, your weight in kilos, then your partner, your children, your clothing. Now when we all go on holiday we get our 25 kilo limit um, for our two weeks on holiday in Spain. 25 kilos doesn't go a long way does it? So you think about that in a van like this. If you're using it in winter you might have warmer coats, you might have bigger boots. How far does that 25 kilos go? If you use that as your baseline and stick with that that's great. The other thing to consider is if you're going for a week or two weeks how are you going to shop? Where are you going to store your food? Where are you going to store your water that you're drinking? They all have a weight. You need to kind of have a budget for that. So if you budget 30 kilos that's 10 kilos for us, that's 10 kilos per person. Um, we probably shop every four days. If we're away, we make it part of our trip. And we eat out a little bit. And we'll buy stuff from local areas, cook it and use it. So, you know, there's ways around things and ways of managing as well. The other thing to consider is fuel and water. If you go one kilo for one litre, we've got a 70 litre tank for diesel. And that currently is 70 kilos. We have the same for water. We have the same, we have around about 50 kilos for grey water. So you might need to look at how often you, you empty your grey water. Is that going to compromise you with weight? If you're filling up with, filling up and using fresh water quite a lot, do you need to have a regime where when you fill up with clean water, you empty with your grey water? Some sites let you empty the grey water straight onto the grass as long as you're using the right product that's not an issue as well but it is getting harder and harder to do as it is a waste product so you would use the facilities on sites um, I wouldn't recommend pouring it straight down the drain or on the side of the road because that seems to alienate a lot of people so once you've got your weight forecasted that will give you um, a little budget of what you can then start putting in your vehicle so you might only have, at this point, have 500 kilos left to do your entire build. But that's more important than having the money to do it. If you go overweight while you're building your van, your van's illegal. So if you overspend, you can pull back a little bit. You can buy something a little bit cheaper somewhere else. You can't really do that with your weight budget. So this is why I'm trying to get this point across to people be conscious of what you're putting in your van how much it weighs and how it's going to affect your van evenly distribute it through your vehicle so it doesn't make your vehicle handle like a dog you know it's it's just little things to consider try and remember this that the weight that you spend on one thing is weight you cannot spend on something else because once you've used that weight it's gone there's no getting it back you, you know you might be able to trim the fat of something a little bit later when you realize I don't really need that and why am I carrying it in the van like me with my tow bar my tow bar weighed about 35 kilos um, and I wasn't using it so when I got rid of it I noticed I noticed the difference in the handling of the vehicle because it was plonked right on the back it acted a bit like a pendulum so once we got rid of it that was 35 kilos back in my favor 
I can always lose a few kilos as well. The next thing to consider is this. What type of license do you hold? If you are lucky enough and you were born before 1987, is it January? January the 1st, 1987? Yep. You will have what they call grandfather rights. You can drive vehicles up to seven and a half ton. If you're born after that time, these points that I'm making previously are really important because you're stuck or your B1 license will only allow you to drive up to uh, three and a half tons. So you can get a C1 license. It is a little bit onerous. You know, you've got to go and take another test. You've got to learn a lot more theory and you've got to understand um, how the vehicles that you could potentially drive work. But if you can drive over 3.5 tons, the vehicles that you can look at, the range of vehicles is much greater and they're usually cheaper and they usually um there's a lot more of them so because a lot of people recently ran out and decided they were going to live the van life the three and a half ton vehicles and below are kind of scarce and the price of them went up through the roof but if you can drive with three and a half tons there's a lot of minibuses there's a lot of double axle vans um the big iv core dailies you know they're 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 rated five ton i think or just under five ton and they're huge huge vans and i bet you convert one of them you're not cramped for space but again it comes down to payload so you've bought your van you've done your weight budget you're now slowly in my case slowly you're slowly building your self-built camper and you're enjoying yourself and you're having fun but don't lose sight of this um of this weight budget to help you keep an eye on your weight budget it's probably best to get a set of scales and weigh each individual component as you're putting it in and, and list it you know you don't want to find at the end of your build that you've blown your budget and you've now got a vehicle that's illegal you know there is there is the opportunity to do this while you're building and it, it is a little bit onerous on yourself but if you do it you can do it safe in the knowledge that you're going to keep your van underweight refer back to your estimates on a regular basis go away have a look that you've not deviated from your initial plans this is where you can trip yourself up the nice to have are exactly that they are nice to have but if that, if that means sacrificing some of your weight, budget, just for a nice to have item, serious consider that. Also when you're buying products, look to see if there is a motorhome version. These are usually lightweight products, low consumption products when it comes to power, things like that. So they can benefit you as well. With them being a lighter construction, lighter materials used, that will help protect your weight budget. Consider the amount of storage that you put in your vehicle as well because the more storage there is the more you're going to jeopardize your weight and your weight budget now we when we built ours we knew that we were going to plate the vehicle so we put a considerable amount of storage in the van because we intend to be away quite a lot in this van and we will need that space to carry our belongings and the equipment that we need to survive while we're on the road where a lot of people go wrong is they don't leave any spare, any room for forgiveness, for want of a better way of explaining it. Basically, if you fill your van right up and you go right to the limit of four, uh, three and a half tons, you've got nothing left to play with. So if you buy something that you don't normally carry and you're already running at three and a half tons, you're going to be overweight. So please leave yourself a couple hundred kilos that you can play around with. Now you've got to remember your curbside weight doesn't include a full tank of fuel, it doesn't include all the water that you're going to add, it doesn't include the clothing that you're going to carry, it doesn't include your food. These are all little things that people may not budget for right at the beginning. So create yourself a checklist. Now if you do get to the end of your build and you've used up quite a lot of your budget and you do need to do some upgrades, talk to the experts first. Don't rush out there and just buy anything off the internet that you think will do the job, because you might find you're wasting 
and throwing good money after bad. Just take advice. You know, there's a lot of good firms out there that will help you. There's a lot of people out there that will help you. But make sure they know what they're talking about. There's a lot of communities. There's a lot of Facebook groups. There's a lot of disinformation. So just be careful. The reason I'm telling you to be careful is there is a lot of companies out there. There's a lot of people providing information, promoting products that will not do what you expect them to do. There's pro-build companies out there that are building vehicles that aren't legal. Um, once you drive them off the forecourt and put them into use and fill them with all your belongings, you'll soon realise that you've basically overloaded your vehicle, your insurance is void, you're running the risk of prosecution and fines, and you could have your vehicle taken off you. All these points I raised earlier. I don't want to be a dark cloud, but this is the reason why you need to consider the weight that you're putting in your vehicle and how you're going to progress your van build without encountering these problems. It's a serious point and not a lot of people are covering the subject. It's that simple. You've got to the end of your build and you realise your vehicle's overweight. It is not the end of the world. Don't bury your head in the sand though. Deal with this problem head on. Currently, the government is rolling out cheap and very accurate weight in motion sensors. These are going to be buried in the road, connected to AMPR cameras, and they're going to be able to read your registration, tell the computer, the system that runs it all, what weight you should be running at, and they'll cross-reference that with the weight sensor information. If you're overweight, they will take your details, they will pass them on to the police, and then they will dispatch a car if they're in the area, and take you to a Weybridge. This is going to be like the new war on speeding. Years ago, everybody was getting tickets because there were banging speed cameras up everywhere and mobile vehicles. That's successful, and it's been successful. You know, we all travel through the roadworks now at 50 mile an hour like a procession because we know if we don't, we're getting a ticket. The same is going to happen with vehicles overweight. So don't avoid the issue, deal with it head on. Contact a specialist. A vehicle engineer, an upplating company, or just go and see um, a friendly mechanic. Talk to them how you know you might be able to weight reduce your weight, but don't ignore it. Deal with the situation. We've successfully upplated our vehicle. I'm going to do a video on that next to guide you through the process and show you all the modifications we did. This plate has been hard work to achieve. It's took time, it's took money, and it's took effort, but it's not unattainable. You know, I set out building that van knowing I'd be doing this process. So I kind of documented things and um, recorded things and gained as much knowledge as I could on the subject so I could share that with you guys. And it's just, you know, it, it's just to try and help and make people more aware of the actual requirements and to keep the wider community of self-built camper van owners and builders the right side of the law. I hope it's been a, a good video for you. I hope it's helped understand. If, it's, if you've created a few questions, just drop me a comment and I'll try and respond to you as best I can. If I can't, I'll point you in D's direction and hopefully he'll be able to give you the right information. I'm not saying I know everything there is about van plate, up plating now, or van weight limits or anything, but I've got a good knowledge. I've done the research. I've worked out what I needed to do to get to where I needed to be. And we've done it. That plate was the goal. That plate <laughs> is what we were after and we've got it now. I can't stick it on the van yet, that's why it's in my pocket, because part of the process is you have to send your documentation off now. I'm waiting for that to come back from DVLA. If I stuck that on my van now and I was pulled over, it isn't factually correct. It might not have been added to the system by DVLA. It usually takes about 30 days, we're two weeks in now, so I'm hoping I get my documents back soon. And as soon as I do, this plate's coming on the van. Anyway, thanks for watching. 
hope you've enjoyed the video give us a thumbs up if you have if you know somebody that could benefit from this video share it with them you know drop it into groups that you're in because i think this is a subject that needs to be out there it's a subject that needs discussed openly not hidden away we all know somebody <laughs> who has jacked up their van to hide the fact that it's overweight now I'm not pointing any fingers or naming any names, but we've all got friends out there that have done this, and it needs dealt with, not hidden away, because I would hate you to lose your fans. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again. Thank you for your continued support. If you like what we're doing, consider subscribing, liking, and sharing with your friends. Also, you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks for watching, and until next time, Take care.